So it says, uh, Saturday Night Live slammed for Chappelle monologue, quote, popularizing anti-Semitism. What, are your, uh, what was the first thing you thought of when you read that headline? I can't believe that this is a genuine criticism against his monologue when clearly he wasn't roasting Kanye <laughs> in that monologue. Yeah. He wasn't roasting Kyrie even. Yeah. They, they were just casualties along the way. He was roasting a permanent class in Hollywood that, you know, be they Jewish or non-Jewish people, completely deserve to be the butt of the joke for once and they didn't want to allow that yeah and uh, he, he took shots at a lot of people he took uh, not just kanye west though kanye west i think got the brunt of uh, of what was going on here kanye west kyrie irving hillary clinton donald trump uh a lot of things po politics got brought into it more than i would have mm -hmm. liked uh to be honest like that part always feels like i just i don't need it in my life, I, I don't need them, especially still talking about Donald Trump in, in 2022 uh, about stuff from 2016 felt shoehorned like he was doing it to meet the middle ground to pull it back on this side of safe for TV. It was so PG, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. it oh, was yeah. super Omega PG uh, because he's very clever at his wording. Yes. And uh, like walking along that tightrope that still allows you to be funny. Yeah. While on SNL. And I can tell that the length of his monologue, it's it's really abnormally long oh, yeah, for, the, for long. as long as SNL monologues are allowed to go. I actually just read about a monologue that Louis C.K. was doing in uh, 2014 or 2015. And he openly said F you to Lorne Michaels because Lorne Michaels wanted to have him cut down on a monologue that was seven minutes long. Yeah. Half the length of the one that Dave Chappelle just gave. Yeah. So you can really tell that given the length of this monologue and also the subject it touched upon, Chappelle was leveraging his power, the, the name recognition and the popularity that is totally organic. Yep over SNL, which does not have the same thing. SNL clearly needs Dave Chappelle and the audience he brings more than the other way around. As a side note, he's kind of famous for that. Um, there's a comedy club in California. I believe it's called the the Comedy Store. And I believe that one night he, he was asked, I think they, Dane Cook was supposed to go after him mm. and they told him to limit his set to like a specific amount and so he did his set and he usually goes like sometimes like three hours long like he's insane and to to basically backhand the company for say to limit his set he goes and says hey guys i never do this but i'm gonna go outside and smoke a cigarette if any of you want to hang out with me, you're welcome to come. And the whole <laughs> audience <laughs> left. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, it's about giving them a taste of their own medicine. The people who think that they are in charge of this this world, like comedy, entertainment, yeah. who actually contribute nothing to it, nothing yeah. to getting butts in seats. They want to tell the creatives what to do. And it worked because it has 4.3 million views in less than, in less yeah. than a day. Uh, the other thing that I thought was very interesting was uh, the, the talk about Kyrie Irving. I, I, I heard nothing about, I didn't know this, this was an Amazon documentary that they were talking about. Yeah, he just, uh, Kyrie nope. just posted this link, link to it and it was basically some, uh, I don't know, black Israelite yeah, type of documentary. No calls to, for Amazon to take said documentary down? Mm. Yeah, you I would guess imagine. It, he, well, he's also sort of like Kyrie's post was just a footnote in yeah. the it larger was, Kanye story. Yeah, and, it was just the URL, I think, too. And like, also, yeah, there, there's a lot of framing going on. Like uh, the the more uh, the more supportive articles framed it as he took shots at at uh, Kanye West and he took shots at this yeah. and this. The, the ones that were less 
uh, forgiving of him said that he was being he was popularizing anti-Semitism, which is insane. There, there's a there, yeah, and there, here's the thing. There's a, there was a quote in the article from about the Anti-Defamation League that I found very interesting at the end here. Uh, it says, uh, I just want to find this one and make sure I say the, the right one so I don't. Okay, yeah. Jewish rights activist uh, Rudy Rockman called the SNL skit a meticulous and calculated move to desensitize the population f- from anti-Semitism, while New York Times theater editor Adam Feldman argued that Dave Chappelle's monologue probably did more to normalize anti-Semitism than anything Kanye said. You could make this about any group. Literally, like, they, the jokes like that have been made about white people for the last however many years that but including type of by anti- Dave Chappelle yeah, uh, yeah so the call that they're normalizing it is abhorrent to me because all groups either everyone's open for criticism and humor or no one is mm-hmm. and until that's uh, back in the uh, back on the table I don't want to hear about it because it's annoying to hear that uh, nobody wants to be told that some group gets special pre- preference when it comes to comedy right that's why people get so uh, abnormally angry when people get mad about comedy because it's like look if I have to be the butt of the joke at some point, then you do too. That's fair. Fair and, is fair. And again, super duper PG. Yeah. Like it, it, it wasn't like Kanye that was like, I'm going DEFCON 3. Yeah. DEFCON. And it, it's, yeah, DEFCON. Well, it's because Kanye is not going off for the purpose of entertaining people. He's going off because in the, the depths of like emotional instability that he's at, he... <laughs> <laughs> feels like he needs to expose some truths. Yeah. And Chappelle, his only aim is to entertain, to make people laugh. And that means targeting everyone. Yep. It means everyone has to be on an equal playing field. You can't be told that, you know, this group of people, you can't make jokes about them. Yeah, it makes You can't angry. win telling him to, to stay silent yeah. on something because that will make him focus on it all the more also um no no discussion of trans rights trans issues in that opening monologue that i heard i appreciated that he, <laughs> that he, that he skirted it. around that yeah. issue and also that none of the skits yeah. focused on that issue or the controversy surrounding it because it shouldn't be all he is and then even after that even after the episode has aired people are still talking about it and weirdly reading into uh mostly the silence of This non-binary SNL cast member, Molly Kearney, and this also non-binary SNL writer, Celeste Yim. Was the writer the one that that boycotted? Well, Chappelle's reps spoke to Page Six saying that there is no evidence of any boycott from any writers. And all of them seemed very excited about Chappelle's appearance and everything. But... Celeste Yim, the writer uh, who identifies as (laughs) non-binary, posted this on their Instagram story. I'm trans and non-binary. I use they, them pronouns. Transphobia is murder and it should be condemned. Wow. That was relatively relatively recently. And you can extrapolate from that, you know, what might have motivated that post so i'm sick of other than hyper- that no evidence of a boycott and i don't think that even if there was one they'd get away with it and i saw this tweet that was like so on point that said the snl writers who boycotted if they did mm-hmm. dave Chappelle, ought to be elon musk meaning yeah. mass layoffs the first half hour was a Chappelle monologue that was funnier than anything on that show in 30 years. Yeah. I, I want to ask, can you read that quote again from Yim? Can you read that quote again for me? Yes. It said, I'm trans and non-binary. I use they, them pronouns. Transphobia is murder and it should be condemned. This, this is, I, I was thinking about That's this such a nothing day. statement to just throw on your Instagram story too. But this is, I was thinking about this the other day. That is exactly the type of thing that would never work outside of transcript. If you say that in the real world, it comes off sounding ridiculous and stupid. But like written down on a, on someone's social media page, mm-hmm. you can get a, a call to action from something like that because everyone reads it in their head uh, in their own tone of voice, right? So it's just the, the type of hyperbole that doesn't work in the real world unless you're giving some really good speech. And even then... It's hyperbolic and people can tell it's hyperbolic. Yeah. It's a, that's a, literally the consequence of the internet. The, the transcript world we live in created that type of hyperbole that drives so much of the language of uh, that, uh, the nor- that it normalized anti-Semitism and that it was a 
calculated move to desensitize the population from anti-Semitism. That's the type of stuff that doesn't sound as good when it's actually said out loud uh, yeah. and when it's typed. And this is that somber, grim, scolding, school teacher tone yeah. that so-called comedians are taking and expecting the same results. But this is why there is nothing recognizable as true comedy yeah. in entertainment anymore. SNL is one of the main culprits for that. And I think inviting Dave Chappelle on and not uh, going out of their way to silence him because they don't have the power to do that anyway yeah. is maybe the beginning of a beginning of a step in the right direction to recover them, recover SNL to its previous prestige in that space but Chappelle was saying that the the supposed writers that were walking off set like they were actually working with them and they were like perfectly fine yeah so i wonder how much of this is just generated Manufactured. yeah yeah to create some hubbub plus nobody cares about saturday night live anymore and haven't for a long honestly time. Uh, ever since lonely island left it's yeah well everyone loves andy sandberg which reminds me i need to watch hot rod again Anybody ever seen Hot Rod? That movie's did, incredible. Yeah. Cool I don't beans. know why my younger brother was like very fixated on that on that movie. He the loved soundtrack. that movie. The soundtrack. <laughs> He's a legend, though. Um, the Andy Samberg was uh, was a fantastic writer. So uh, it's just another example of the the thing that gets me angry is the fact that one group uh, uh, one group or another is allowed to insult everyone and then other people aren't. He also uses the point where he talks about I had Jewish friends, which made me think of when people saying I, I had it. a black friend. Like it's mm -hmm. that's that's what that comes off as to me. Well, that's. A Exactly why he said it, and, and also, but yeah. that's that's like it's like we live in a culture now where you can just degrade that and say that doesn't mean anything. Where it's like I have a, a black friend, and they're like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something like a racist would say." I hope mm -hmm. that if you one day, oh, I I don't hope this happens actually, but if you one day get in heat with the Latino community, you start parading me around like, "Listen, yes, I will." That's me, amigo. Like, I, I have I have Dane over here. Say how much you like me, Dane. <laughs> I, I mean, I need testimonials from you <laughs> yeah. uh, if I ever say anything offensive. Which Red Dasovic, muy bueno. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it in that voice, yes. too. Yes, it's fantastic. He's like taquito, very <laughs> spicy. <laughs> I've got to wonder, do these butthurt people on Twitter with their pronouns in bio know that their anger makes his jokes funnier? Uh, do they know that they're actually working in his favor? Because when I see someone saying uh chappelle with the a in chappelle censored with an asterisk yeah because they don't want to be able, they don't want it to be searchable and when they say chappelle is vile yeah i laugh more yeah well that, that <laughs> they're was high they're actively working in both snl and dave chappelle's favor by doing this by Just broadcasting their outrage the, and it's uh, like you're on the same side as the establishment yep. in entertainment right now. That's actually been something I've been pointing out to a lot of, I was pointing out to a friend the other day. I said a lot of these people, it's really funny who, how they don't understand that uh, they are now every bit the establishment where they, they, they decry corporations while begging yeah. for jobs from Disney. They, they, they want nothing more than to tell uh, billionaires to get in their place, but they only see legitimacy through the New York Times or the Washington Post or Disney or Warner Brothers as CNN. Like they are, it feels like they're almost trapped in a way like they can't make it on their own because if they made it on their own, they wouldn't need those companies. So they, it's like they, that they always put uh, what happens in comics is like they put their name of like the comics they work on in their bio, which then explains why they have a blue check mark, even though nobody's ever heard of them. Right. So it's like uh, they get all their legitimacy from corporations while trashing corporations. And I noticed it this weekend. I was watching I was rewatching Batman, the animated series after Kevin Conroy passed away. And even that there's a lot of like uh, in some of the earlier episodes, there's a, um, a scene when Clayface, the character of Clayface uh, is created, where basically you find out that the leader of this company of Gotham Corp is like, like a bad guy. He's like getting a humanitarian of the year award. Well, well like they're in like the lady that's announcing it outside of the, of the front office of the building, the news reporters like, and he's a huge, he's a great humanitarian as like a security guards, like beating up like a pedestrian Real. for yeah. yeah. So it's like, even then, like when you think about that, that was made in the nineties, but it was still done at the, at the behest of a, a multi-billion dollar corporation in Warner brothers. So mm -hmm. they're trashing 
Warner, they're trashing big corporations while being part of a big corporation, and it's kind of always been part of Hollywood. So it's uh, it's interesting to see that type of, I guess you'd call it cognitive dissonance in a way, like they don't realize it. Well, there are also always going to be cases where people think they're infiltrating a mega corporation well, for the greater good, and you know that's true. I mean, they you, think they're working against the interests of it, while actually they're just a useful cog in the machine. Yeah. It's it's funny too because that's that's uh, they were talking about the Facebook layoffs how like they they laid off like eleven thousand people and they're like but did anybody notice I mean I don't use Facebook but did anybody notice Facebook not working no because same they thing all, with Netflix they did anyone <laughs> notice that the user experience on Netflix is different now that they've gotten rid of like a thousand email jobs yeah they were talking like it's all it's all women in HR jobs yeah <laughs> like they, they don't have like actual jobs it's like project it's an untenable situation coordinator person who like a diversity program coordinator it's like well what about yeah. the you would you really need more than just your head of diversity and you just like come up with agendas for zoom calls yeah <laughs> yep. that's pretty much it oh they love zoom calls too because they feel important They're oh, like going zoom hopping calls. on my next zoom call like that's like we get it. You, you you're proud of being an adult. That's Imagine how much uh, like SNL writers room suffered in its output from doing it over Zoom. Yeah. Rather than having like the chemistry of a bunch of people around a table. That happened talking when the when that one writer. Remember we talked about it. Like the the guy was writing a uh, a scene for an episode of like nine one one. Yeah. And the guy made like a not an anti semitic or he made some type of like racist joke. It was or, no. It was like a. It was a line that he wrote for a white character who was racist. So, yeah. That like obviously trouble. the racist character is saying something racist, and then the entire rest of the writers' room over Zoom was like shocked and appalled by this yeah. and ousted him. Yeah, it's it's like uh, Papa John because context doesn't matter. Yeah, it's like Papa John. He said uh, he said uh, a word that you should not say to explain that things used to be different in his time, and and then context didn't matter then. Context doesn't matter now because people don't think logically. This is why, like, even though Dave Chappelle appearing on SNL seems like a relatively small victory, um, it could actually be a sign that there's like a new beginning I on the way for comedy uh, and because the, like what works works yeah you know like normally what they want out of a monologue before this is just jokes cracked at the expense of like audience members who may be watching yeah. and now they're learning that like being outraged against the common man doesn't actually land. I keep telling people and everyone gets super annoyed at me when I say it, but like woke is going to end. Like it's just, it's untenable. It's just going to stay with losers on the internet, predominantly on Tumblr and whatever. Something horrible and out, and out of this world will replace it and will long for the days of wokeness. <laughs> but but we'll have a nice period, you know. Are we sure something better is going to replace it and not something worse? Oh, something I said worse. something horrible. Um, yeah. Like the so. only thing that but I some can people see are more optimistic than that. Me, oh, that's sweet. Me and I you discussed the fact that it may it may take the fact that eventually one day the people that are at the top of these companies will be smart enough to know because they'll be closer to our age or I mean they'll be older by that time that they'll understand that 20 uh, nut jobs on Twitter does not equal the populace as far as like where you need to take your cues from on what to make and what to not make. So if you just because you get 20 outraged emails in a row does not mean that the product is something that you should pull. It just feels like a lot because you're one person fielding a bunch of emails. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the grand scheme of how many people actually took in that media was that a lot? And I think that a lot of people that are at the top uh, of these companies now don't understand scale. And when we, the the royal we, began looking to comedians and entertainers, actors, actresses, singers as a guide for our collective moral yeah. compass, that was yep. the beginning of the end. I would agree with you 110%. I don't know that. what will replace that, that structure, but yeah. like... 
That was a particularly sassy finger. Well, I just somebody, <laughs> somebody pointed out. They said Brett always says one hundred and ten percent, and I just did it oh, right there. Damn it! Well, <laughs> lean into it. Lean say into it more often. I, like I said, I, I told you that story about the the friend who's like, I don't look up to actors. I look up to people that deserve to be looked up to, like Stacey Abrams. Oh <laughs> I was my like, god! I was like, we are <laughs> screwed. I, at least look up to someone who's dead, right? <laughs> How about your parents? Is that a standard? How, I mean, it's uh, better than Stacey Abrams or. It, Louis C.K. Are those are so, only if they you met somebody you've met, somebody you actually know yeah. in the real world. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.